Amen. Like I said last time, every man's battle. And again, you might be wondering why the apostle has a copy of every man's battle. And the answer is because it's every man's battle. Everybody's got a battle. I don't care how good you look or how you might present yourself or how many bishop collars you wear, everybody's got a battle. Am I saying so? Amen. Amen. When we talk about battles, amen. Rev. Chris gave me this because he knew I needed it. Amen. Battles men face. Amen. Amen. Here's another one. Pure desire. Uh, God wants our desires to be pure. It's not wrong for us to desire things, but he wants us to desire the right things. Am I right about that? Is that all right? Amen. And here's another one called Breaking the Silence. And I like this one because this brother who was a Seventh-day Adventist pastor, amen, he, about lost, he almost lost his ministry and his wife because he broke the silence and came to find out that a whole lot of other people were fighting the same battle that he was fighting, but they didn't want to talk about it. Amen. But this brother talked about it. And, 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 and uh, we're living in a day and time when if you start really talking about stuff, they don't want to hear you preach no more. That's right. Uh, when you start telling the real, when you start talking about what people's issues really are and what your issues really are, see, because the devil will tell you in religion, Doc, you better not tell them that because then won't nobody call you to preach in their churches anymore. They won't want to hear from you anymore and they'll be ashamed to be associated with you and be associated with your name because you got a battle. But you've come to find out that they got the same one. Am I saying something? <laughs> Matthew chapter number six. Try not to be here long. Verse 22. And the Bible gives us these words. The light of the body is the eye. Mm -hmm. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Mm -hmm. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. Right. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Wow. No man can serve two masters. Uh, if your eye is evil, your whole body is messed up. If therefore the light that, in thee, that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? In other words, that darkness is going to encompass everything. That darkness is going to cover or it's going to uh, encompass everything in my life if my eye is not single. Because we think that we can take sin and put it in a corner. All right. Huh? We think that we can be like Samson. Samson was strong over here, but he was weak over there. All right. All right. Samson had holiness over here <laughs> when he was in the pulpit. <laughs> But he had freakiness <laughs> for it. <laughs> and it is possible because we get religious and we say, you can't have freakiness and holiness at the same time. But if you read the book of 1 Corinthians, you will find that it is possible to be anointed and still be crazy. <laughs> We got a whole lot of people in church that's anointed, but they crazy. Huh? I might be one of them. Look at somebody say, is you crazy? Huh? But that's what Jesus, why Jesus died, because we crazy. If there were no crazy people in the world, then it would not have been necessary for him to go to the cross. Amen. Uh, am I saying something here? Oh, yes. If, if the light is darkness, if you crazy, how great is that craziness? Mm. Uh -huh. Wives can testify to craziness. Mm. I don't know about you, Pastor, but you you might think that you're the only one. But my wife got some of her best sermons dealing with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be acting crazy. she be, Lord. And I, be, Man, that guy, I start right in the middle of my crazy. That girl crazy. <laughs> Yeah, right in the middle of acting a fool, yeah. huh? you hear the gospel. Because they have to deal with our craziness. Mm -hmm. Amen. No man can serve two masters. He 
evil, he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God. And that thing that rises up in your life and tries to be God. You cannot serve God and serve greed. Right. You cannot serve God. Hallelujah. You cannot serve God and fill your head with empire and, 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 and what's them other shows? Huh? Empire. I'm glad you don't know because I don't know where I ain't got cable. Power. 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 Because we'll get up here and try to minister. And am I right, sister? We'll, we'll get up here. One thing I like is that when she opened her mouth, I didn't hear Beyonce. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I know I said something. I didn't hear Beyonce coming out of her mouth. Thank you, Jesus. But we got too many folks up in church talking about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> You've been soaking in that mess. <laughs> huh? It's impossible to have ministry before men before until we first have ministry before God. Huh? The way I don't be people be telling me you showing up, and I play this at home just like I do here. I play this in my room when ain't nobody looking, just like I do here. Huh? And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Mm -hmm. And when you play your keyboard before God, when there's nobody looking except God, mm -hmm. when you come before God's people, it becomes effective because it's the truth. Yeah. And God is not going to know the lie, and he already knows that you're not interested in impressing these folks because this is what me and Georgie do all the time. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I know I said something. Amen. Praise Jesus. They ain't even the subject. I don't know. Maybe somebody need to hear that. James 5 and 6. Let me stop playing here. James 5 and 6. James 5 and 16, I'm sorry. James 5 and 16 says this, Confess your faults one to another, yeah. and pray for one another that ye may be healed. Mm -hmm. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Yes. Right. Yes. It says, Confess your faults one to another. Amen. Now, it does not matter how much the Bible may tell you that there's certain things that we don't want to talk about. Amen. The Bible says, confess your faults one to another. Mm -hmm. I ought to be able to go to my brother and give him an honest answer or an honest testimony or an honest uh, assessment of my condition and know that it's not going to hit the street. That's right. Amen. Uh, and know that he's not, the first thing he's going to do when I leave his house is jump on the phone. Huh? But the problem that we have in the church is we have many men who are suffering and, and, and crying out and, and going through in their corners of darkness and they can't tell anybody. Huh? Like I told you before, I had a pastor sit at my table and he said, I'm going to help you with this thing, brother. I'm going to be on you like white on rice. We're going to get this thing done. And I started to feel a little bit of hope. I started to feel like, oh, man, we finally going to do this thing. We finally going to, hey, amen, somebody's going to come alongside me. And he never did help me. Mm. My God. Never even called me and gave me a word of encouragement. But it was out there. Amen. And by the time I got to church, people looked at me like I was dirt. Yeah. Mm. And the problem is we're afraid to really share what's going on with us, not because your pastor may take you down from ministry, but because he knows your business is going to be all over the street. Amen. Because we live in a city full of preachers who can't hold water. Yeah. <laughs> wow. huh? I'm just telling the truth. We like to get on the phone and get deep. Where phone? Where the phone? We like to get on the phone and be deep. Yeah, so, yes, Reverend, uh, Yes, I, this is not by way of gossip, but yes, we, we need to hide, hide him on another hot. He come on our son, the Robocop, Chevrolet, hook him in the side. He came in on a hot. Yeah, let me tell you what that Negro do. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I seen him with him. You know, but you can't trust nobody. What I would like to do is set up 
an atmosphere. And what we need to do in the church is set up an atmosphere so that people can come and talk about what's going on with them and know that we can be trusted. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. One of the greatest contributing factors to the weakness of the church is the fact that we are sometimes interested in how things look than how they really are. Mm -hmm. Our church culture trains men to be phony, and then it throws them away when they're caught being phony. Wow. Wow. Amen. Amen. Church got quiet. Amen. The one thing that we must do is we must learn to be honest about our struggles so that we can assist one another to overcome. I want Amen. you to look at somebody on tonight, look at somebody real hard and repeat the words of my topic. Say, brother, brother, sister. <laughs> if you want to get free from that thing, you, get free from that thing. you got to drag it into the light. You got to drag it into the light. Amen. Look at somebody else and say, if you really want to get delivered, if you really want to get delivered, are the eyes of the church. Uh, Evangelist Randy, if you will. Somebody get a microphone to him. I'll tell you what. Yeah, Pastor Williams, if you will, if you can get me the book of Numbers. And we're going to make this quick. Numbers 10, verse 29. Men are the eyes of the church. The devil does not care about women coming to church. I'm not saying he don't hinder them. I'm not saying he don't fight you. But what he really, really threatens him is when men start coming to church. Amen. When men start standing up in their place of leadership, when men start stepping up and taking on their role as the heads of their household, as the eyes of the church, and as the priest in their home. That's what Project Spirit is supposed to be about. And the devil has fought us from day one because he does not want men to know who they are. Amen. Am I saying something? Amen. He does not want men to know that they are the eyes of the church. Amen. Because if the eyes get in place, the church will begin to regain direction. Amen. The church will begin to know the direction that it's going in. But as long as the church ain't got no eyes, we're going to struggle around blindly in the dark. Yes, there is a great ministry in this area, but we can't help nobody when we still need help. We can't give anybody anything that we don't first have ourselves. Amen. Men are the eyes of the church. Romans, Numbers 10, what does it say? You said 10 and 29? Uh-huh, what does it say? 29 through 31. And Moses said to Jesus, to hold, hold back, hold back. Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Regal, the son of Ruel, the night, uh -huh. Moses' father. Now, dig it. He was a Midianite. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Moses' father-in-law. Keep going. We are journeying unto a place of which the Lord said, I will give it you. We going somewhere. Come thou with us, and we will do the, their good. Uh -huh. For the Lord hath spoken good concerning Israel. And he said unto him, I will not I ain't going. I will not go, but I will depart to my own land. I ain't going with y'all. And to my kindred. I'm going to get around my boat. Yeah. Sound like a typical black man, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I am not concerned about you and yours. Mm -hmm. I'm more concerned about me, mine, and I, and mine. Don't care if y'all die. Come on, give me that next verse. And he said, leave us not. Don't leave us. I pray thee for as much. Don't leave us because you have value to us. Thou knowest how mm -hmm. we are to encamp in the wilderness, and thou may You know the way. Come on. May be to us instead the eyes. You know where all the rough stuff is. Amen. Why do you think God let us go through some of the things that we've gone through? Because we are the eyes of the church and we know the way through the desert. Mm -hmm. 
We know where the rough stuff is. We know where the waste are. We know where the shortcuts are. But as long as the devil can continue to deal with us concerning our eyes, the church will never regain its vision. Eyes of the church, they are the vision carriers for the family. Now, what happens is God made us sight oriented. Huh? God made men to operate by our eyes. See, now today being Valentine's Day, a lot of ladies want to go home and they want to cuddle with their husbands. And they want to snuggle with their husbands. And they want to watch a movie with their husbands. And they want to romanticize and fantasize with their husbands. But see, the husband, when he come home, he come home with a box. And he say, he say, baby, put this on. <laughs> she ain't taking it. <laughs> she ain't gonna put it on. But he want to see something. Huh? Because men are sight oriented. Men operate through our eyes, and God created us to love the beauty of a woman. Yes. Amen. God created, he didn't, he didn't say don't look, huh? But when you're looking, when you're looking, you don't need to be looking wrong. Yeah. But what happened when sin came into the world, amen, lust came into the world, and lust warped everything that a man could possibly see. Yeah. He took away our ability to have vision, and basically he made us nasty. Yeah. Wow. Amen. I'm just stating the fact. That's why we got all these songs. I'm only a man. <laughs> Can't help myself. <laughs> huh? But when Jesus came into the world and shed his blood, he gave us a way to be able to help ourselves. Amen. Amen. Am I saying something? Yes. Amen. First Thessalonians 4, 3 through 5. Pastor Wiggles. We going somewhere. The, the, the Lord let me go slow this time. Last time it was fast. I don't know. Maybe he wants us to get it this time. That's why he said go back and tell them again. <laughs> they, 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 they didn't get it the first time. The first time they were entertained. And the first time they shouted and danced. And the first time they jumped and they ran. But nobody got it. <laughs> because we still ain't dragged it into the light yet. All right. Three and five. Look what it say, Pastor. First Thessalonians 4, 3 through 5. Please take this time four. Four. Okay. Four. First Thessalonians 4, 3 through 5. Is it 4 or 3? 4. Verses 3 through 5, okay, Pastor. Thank you. <laughs> For this is the will of God. This is God's will. Thank you. Even sanctification. Even my sanctification is God's will that I be sanctified. Amen. Mm -hmm. So that means away with the devil made me do it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That, that, that means away with uh I was born this way. Mm -hmm. ain't, ain't that what they're saying now? Come on, dog. Come on. That's right. They got, I was born this way. You know, they flapping all over the place. No, no. It said the will of God is Amen. that I not be nasty. Mm -hmm. The will of God is that I not be dirty. Mm -hmm. The will of God is that I lay the habit down. Huh? The will of God is that I not smell like cigarette smoke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It said that's the will of God. Amen. Even my sanctification. With the old man. Come on. Even your sanctification. Mm -hmm. That ye should abstain from fornication. That I should stay away from folk that I ain't got no business sleeping with. In the first place. In the first place. <laughs> that I ain't married to. Uh-huh. <laughs> that everyone of you should know how to possess it. That I should That's know how to control myself. Yeah. Thank you, that I should not have a case of the bad, or the, or the, or the can't help us. A bad case of the can't help us. <laughs> Come on. And sanctification and honor. Man, he must want me to do this slow. Oh, uh-huh. Not in the lust of conceptionists. Not in the lust of concupiscence. Which basically means covetousness, nasty covetousness. Like everything you see, you want. As the Gentiles, as the Gentiles, 
In other words, he said, safe folk don't act like that. Yeah. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Upright, holy. Huh? Upright, holy. You got to understand that the anointing is attractive. Mm -hmm. And you can be the biggest, fattest, ugliest, no neck, black, sweaty, no neck, TD Jakes looking pastor in the belly, big belly button hanging down pastor in the world. <laughs> and women won't want you. <laughs> huh? And you think it's you, but it's not you. It's the anointing. Amen, amen, amen. Yes. The anointing is attractive. Yes. That it is. Huh? That's, when you, that's why when you get up to sing, amen, and the pastor say, it's all right for you to sing, but, oh, jeez, cover yourself up. You can't sing in church and look like Beyonce. You can't sing in church and come in looking like Cardi B and, and want to sing in the praise team. Because the anointing is attractive. That's right. That's right. And it ain't that you so cute. Mm -hmm. Huh? It's just that when you open your mouth, the brothers see you and say, ooh. Mm -hmm. And now you wonder why all these brothers is trying to chase you. Amen. Don't be complaining. Get some new clothes. <laughs> right. I'll take you to the mall. <laughs> I'll buy you some yeah. new stuff. Yeah. Anyhow, 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 we ought to be able to control ourselves. Well, we got to understand, even from looking at Judges 14 and Judges 16, the character by the name of Samson, if you look at both of those uh, uh, chapters, the very first thing it says in those chapters is Samson saw. Samson went down to a, a place called Timnath, and he saw. Samson went down to Gaza, and he saw. Now, first of all, you got to understand that Timnath and Gaza were Philistine cities. Yes, it was. Samson was an Israelite. Yeah. And we got brothers like to go on midnight rides. Yeah. That was him. You know what I'm talking about, right? That was him. We need Tim not to uh, And like, she can't hear the car crank up in the driveway. <laughs> huh? What are you doing in Gaza, Samson? You're an Israelite. Gaza is a Philistine city. And if you go down to Gaza, look at a brother and say, stay out of Gaza. Stay, stay out, of out, of out of Gaza. If you go down to Gaza, you're going to see something. And it was not the sword of the Philistines that killed Samson. It was not the wiles of Delilah that killed Samson, but it was what he saw. And the biggest problem that we have is what we see. Because as soon as we see something, we feel like we want it. Amen. Am I saying something? And the devil likes it. Oh, no, 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 stay out of that. The average age for exposure to internet pornography is age 11. And you know what? Since I, since I collected that statistic, statistic, it's gotten lower. Yeah. Yeah. These kids got all these phones and, yeah. and iPods and iPads and all. This long one ain't looking at this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You know they got all of this stuff. I mean, how many how many y'all actually monitoring what your children and grandchildren are what are looking at on these phones and these yeah. tablets? Yeah, one of us. God bless. God bless. Good block. Huh? And you can put blocks on stuff. Yeah, they know how to do that. Oh yeah, but they know how to get around it. They do. They know how to take it off too. Oh yeah, they know how to take it off too. Mm -hmm. This kid's a smart. But we gotta get ourselves under control first. Exactly. Amen. Am I saying something? Amen. Fifty-one percent of all ministers admitted to viewing pornography. Mm. Ministers, preachers, oh. huh? And we gotta understand that preaching is a lonely job. Preaching is a thankless <laughs> job. Huh? And some pastors, they ain't, got, they ain't got nobody to go to. They don't have anybody to talk to. You think they're sitting in the office on, you think they're praying on Tuesday? Y'all ain't at the church. <laughs> he in the office with the computer. You don't know what he's doing. Yeah. Wow. Am I saying something? Yeah. And 37% admitted to having a struggle in this area. That's true. But the problem is we won't be straight with each other because I've had people actually look at me, look me dead in the eye and say, man, that ain't my struggle. That ain't my problem, yo. I ain't got that, doc. Huh? But I fix computers. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I, I fix computers. I got two 
uh, computer science degrees. I fix computers. Wow. And I'm going on your computer and you've been on hot girl, hotgirls.com. <laughs> huh? And be talking about that my cousin. <laughs> hey, so let me take my time. That, 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 that was cuz, man. That was cuz. Huh? Well, you better, you better, you better put lay some hands on cuz. <laughs> uh, you better get some oil and slap cuz upside the head. In the name of you, yeah, cuz. It was you. But you don't feel like you can tell anybody. Amen. Huh? 17% of women. Seventeen percent of women. Y'all thought it was just us. <laughs> oh wow! I know y'all thought it was just us, and you know I don't know what y'all be trying to see, but talk to him. <laughs> I don't think none of that stuff probably looking good to me. I don't think so. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Pornography is highly addictive and it strives in darkness. It feeds on secrecy. You know how back in the day, you know, now you can just, you can, you can get it, you can grab your phone, and you can just pull it up. You know, but back in the day, you used to have to hide. You don't know that's what you was born. Back in the day, you know, brother be hiding, you know, he put his hat on and, and, and daddy you had to see. My daddy. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> That, that's how I know about this. <laughs> and you know the crazy part was, you know, instead of, I'm just be real, bump it, bump it. We ain't even got a two of I'm just be real. He took my magazines. <laughs> yeah. Right? And then I came home and he like, I took them dirty magazines out. You know, because I thought I was grown, right? You know, I got I got the flick pit house and all that sitting up in my room. Bro. 18. Good job. Bro. You know, you think you need that stuff in order to prove your man. That's another, that's stinking thinking. Amen. Amen. Huh? The devil said, you got to have this. That's why Jesus said, you can't serve God and mammon. And mammon is that stuff that talks to your mind and says, in order for you to get by, you have to have this. Amen. You know, I had my magazines in my room, had them on the rack, you know, wrong, wrong, you know, wrong. The Playboy, wrong. I read the articles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's I, that right I came home and, and, and my dad said, I took the dirty magazines out of your room. I'm like, okay, you know, but what would have been good would have been for him to sit me down and say, you know, son, that stuff ain't good for you. He didn't do that because he took mine and added them to his stack. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> When I found my stuff, I found his too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. But back in the day, it was something that we snuck and did. You know, you the preacher, you the, you the, you the, you, and you 16, you don't want nobody to see you. I've been, I've been, when I was living in Germany, I've been in every porno shop in Stuttgart, Germany. That's the Lord. I'm going to tell <laughs> Cause see, I, I I I told the devil a long time ago. I don't I don't I don't care about you telling on me. I tell him myself. Amen. 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 Right. So now, and the preacher is coming out the doggone shop, <laughs> <laughs> hoping that don't know nobody else don't Amen. come downtown and see you. Anytime you know the Bible says that Moses, right before he killed the Egyptian, he looked left and he looked right. Yes, he did. Generally, if it's anything you got to look left and look right to do, generally it's wrong. <laughs> wow. Huh? Amen. wow. Amen. If it's right, you just go ahead on and do it. But if you if you're doing all this, yeah. huh? Yeah. Something wrong with what you're doing. Yes. <laughs> Am I saying something? Yeah. Oh, yes. It's highly addictive and it feeds on secrecy. And the devil likes it when we're phony because he knows as long as a thing stays hidden, it has power over us. Amen. Amen. John chapter 1 verse 5 says, The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. In other words, the darkness couldn't understand light. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. That's why when you go to the family reunion, they don't want you to talk about Jesus. 
Huh? Because the light can't handle the, the darkness can't handle light. Amen. That's right. The darkness can't comprehend light. It can't push light away. But when the lights come on, darkness has to flee. Amen. So you got to have right. somebody in your life. I don't care if it's pornography. I don't care if you just like lusting at them dudes on Empire. I, I don't know because <laughs> most of them seem like they like other dudes. So probably you got nothing to look at. Oh, we, we ain't got no Richard Roundtree. We ain't got no brothers like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? <laughs> you know, John, yeah. Shut, yeah. Your, shut your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. We ain't got no. We got that toxic masculinity now. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Women and women. you know yeah. where they, they want men to be weak. Yep. Mm. True. Yep. Uh, yep. They, they, they want men to be soft. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah. They want men to be women. To be women. Yep. So I don't even know what y'all looking at. There ain't nothing there. <laughs> Let me hurry and be done with this. Three good reasons to drag it into the light. You know, be done. One, it's not worth it. Because it's destroying you. Amen. Proverbs 6 and 26. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. Yep. Piece of bread. Yep. You know what that means? It, it don't mean like dump so poor that you don't have anything but bread. That, that's part of it. But the other part is that, you know, back then, bread was the most common thing they had. Yes, right. yes. You know, they had more bread than anything else. Right. So in other words, there won't be anything special about you anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, there won't be anything that's anointed about, about us anymore. Amen. When we're messing with stuff like pornography Amen. and messing with people that we ain't got no business messing with and sleeping with women we ain't got no business sleeping with, with you, it ain't your time. You ain't married. Mm -hmm. That's right. Huh? One thing I've discovered, and i discovered it through experience, and this is to the brothers. Anytime you're in a situation where you're in transition, whether you coming home from prison or whether you just got out of the military or, or, or whether you just going through a divorce or, you know, whatever it may be, when you're in transition, you can't look at what everybody else got and think that you can have it. Mm -hmm. Huh? Because I went through that. And the Lord beat my behind, too. So now it's a lesson that I can teach other people. Huh? But if you come out of jail, tell me, I got to get a girlfriend like my brother. I do that my son. I need a girlfriend. Huh? You know, I, I, I need a Mercedes Benz. No, you don't. You need to, you need to get on your knees That's and right. say, Lord, I'm here now. Amen. Amen. What do you want me to do now? Huh? You looking at everybody else's car. You looking at, you know, I came out, I came out of Germany and I, everything my brother had, I wanted. And tw over 20 years later, I'm still paying for that, Pastor. Because, and, and all I had to do, I was living in this basement. All I had to do was fall on my knees and say, Lord, what do you want me to do now? Amen. But instead, I looked around. And that's why we got to get control of our eyes. Because we can't always have what everybody else got. Mm -hmm. but sometimes it's not pornography. Sometimes you just... Everything you see that's outside the will of God for your life because you see somebody else with it, you want it. Mm. It's true. Amen. Huh? It's true. Jesus. But we got to start wanting what God wants for us. Amen. Amen. Why? Because it's not worth it. For by means of a whorish woman or by means of a whorish decision, a man is brought to a piece of bread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number two, you can't fight it alone. Mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 and 10, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falls. Mm. For he has not another to help him up. Mm. You know, one of the things that I've seen, especially among black men, is that we got this 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 syndrome or this mindset where you ever you ever notice, brothers, that whenever it's about to become their day. Or it's their time. Or it's about to turn around for them. Everybody's sitting there waiting. Where's Larry? Or it's Harry. Or it's your day to graduate. Where's Harry? Where's Mike? Everybody paid the ticket to get in and everything. And everybody's sitting waiting on you. And you went back into your thing. Because the devil told you that you don't deserve to have anything. How many of us have been through addiction know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. how, many, how many times have you ran away 
when it was your time to get something or your time to move ahead or your time to progress and that voice in your, in your head said, you don't belong there. Mm -hmm. That is true. Jesus. Come on back here in the dark with me. Mm -hmm. Come on, have a little bit of this. It'll make you feel good. <laughs> Huh? Come on, have a look. Drink a little bit of that. It'll make you forget all about it because, you know, you black or you white or you male and, and, and you don't deserve to have anything. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to do that. I'm going to talk. Amen? Because I already did the dun 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 dun. You know, we did that last time. Mm -hmm. My mother died in the bed next to me. And, and, and my father came into the room. I was four years old. My father came into the room and he said, why didn't you do something? But that did is it put a spirit of guilt and shame on me. Amen. Huh? I, I used to feel so guilty that I thought that everything was my fault. Mm. Amen. I had such a spirit of guilt and shame. I wouldn't even say, but you know what? People can see what you carry. In. That's right. Huh? Even unspiritual people mm -hmm. can see into the spirit realm and see. They used to call me blaming on Jackson. <laughs> that, that was the, the joke. Blame it on Jackson. <laughs> every, day, every time something happened, blame it on Jackson. They thought that they were kidding. But they actually could see what I was carrying. Am I saying Jesus. somebody here Amen. Know what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. But look at somebody and say, it ain't your fault. It isn't your fault. That's why we gotta understand principles of law and grace. See, anybody, you, 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 oh, God, people used to pick at me in church. Who you think you is? Quoting all that scripture. You just want to show people how much Bible you know. Man, I ain't got time for that foolishness. The interest of thy word bringeth light. Amen. It giveth understanding to the simple. Amen. Like I said on last night, I couldn't sit at a table and have a conversation, an intelligent conversation, unless I had a drink in my hand. Then I started reading this book. Huh? And then I started opening my mouth, and all of a sudden, treasures of wisdom and knowledge started coming out of my mouth. The useless guy. The kid that let his mother die. The guy who it was everybody else's fault. Now God can use me because his word brought me to life. His word took me from being common and, and, and took me out of being worthless and made me into something that he could use. Amen. That's what the word does for you. Huh? That's why we need it so bad. We got to come out of this thing. You know, I was talking to somebody today, and I was saying, you know, it seems like the Christians are the ones that seem like they the least want to go to church. Mm. Seems like the one place in the world we don't want to be is church. <laughs> I don't understand that. we Because this is supposed to be our place. This is supposed to be our kingdom, and this is supposed to be our rehearsal for heaven. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So if we really have God on the inside, seem like this is where he is, and this is where his people is, so this is the place where I want to be. Amen. But if I got something going on with me where I want to be everywhere else, Paul says, examine yourself. Whether you be examined, whether you even be in the faith, you don't like coming to church. Mm -hmm. You ain't got nothing on the inside of you that says, get up on Sunday morning. Huh? You ain't got nothing on the inside of you that says, catch two buses if you have to, but make it to the house of God. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, me and my wife used to get out in the snow, carry instruments and stuff, and make it to church. And now they seem like we're living in a time when, when people don't even want to come unless, if I ain't got a ride, I ain't coming. Mm -hmm. right. I don't know who I'm saying this to, but get ministry down in your heart. Amen. Amen. Get ministry and, 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 and the love of God down in your heart Amen. where, oh God, when you want to do this. Amen. When Amen. nobody has to look for you and nobody has, I don't know where Brother Larry went. He said he was going to open the doors of the church. I, but when you got someone on the inside of you that says, I got to do this. Amen. Right. Huh? Because I tried to quit this thing a million times. And every time I tried to quit, I ended up coming back. Yeah. Huh? Every time, I, every time I got mad at the church folks, I ain't saying another word to them Negroes. 
Huh? I ended up coming right. I ain't even going to mess with this no more. But let me give you some final statistics. Porn revenue is larger than all combined revenue of all professional football, baseball, and basketball franchises. That's a whole lot of money. For some evil crap. Huh? U.S. porn revenue exceeds the combined revenues of ABC, CBS, and NBC. That's $6.2 billion. And somebody might be sitting there saying, well, that's not my problem. But you got kids. You got grandkids. There's a gentleman right there who, who, who deals with, uh, y'all got that a ministry concerning human trafficking, right? Yes, sir. I mean, what do y'all, what do we think that is? Where, where did they get those people from? That's right. Huh? Genesis. They have, they have, oh my God. Oh, oh. I've seen pictures of, 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 of ladies that be smiling. I'm just going to tell the truth. Videos, and it looked like they're having a good time. They're not enjoying that. No. Even the men, they're not enjoying it. That's why some of the men, they blow their brains out. Because in the middle of the night, they have to deal with what I did to somebody's daughter. Huh? What I did with somebody's daughter who didn't even want to be there, but they told her, if you want to get paid, you got to do it. Huh? Amen. Those are people's kids. There's a lady... Uh, who was a real champion for this. She had once been, a, 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 you know, she had once been one of them. She's 50 years old. She died on Sunday. She killed her. She, she had an overdose. And she was supposed to have been a Christian. She was supposed to have got saved. And she still ended up dying because of something she did 30 years ago. And there's another lady, beautiful lady. Her and her husband got a wonderful ministry. But you know what? She used to be one of my favorite girls. Old Chrissy. I used to love me some Chrissy. Chrissy was fine. Yes, sir. But you know what? The day that I heard Chrissy got saved, I had a dream I was raping my sister. Don't be looking at me like, you freak. Well, what you done? <laughs> That's what this is about. What have you done? It's true. What do you have hiding in the dark? But somebody got to come out and tell it. So I'm going to preach this message maybe a hundred more times. And sometimes they're going to shout. And sometimes we just going to talk. But I'm going to still keep giving it. Because I can do all that other stuff. But I can do here is what God really wants me to do. Amen. I served as professor of homiletics in a Bible college. And I can put together an eight-page eight sermon. And I can teach seminars and, and workshops and blah, blah, blah. But this is what I think God really wants me to do. Yes, because yes. nobody, in it, we're not talking about it. Right. Now, our Caucasian brothers, they got plenty of ministries where they're talking about it. But go into a so-called black church and start talking like this. And they look at me just like how, just how some of y'all are looking at me now. <laughs> huh? But you got a grandson sitting in your basement with a phone in his hand. Right? Huh? And you think he's down there playing games. No, he ain't. He's developing seeds in his life. Well, 40 years from now, you're going to wonder why he can't get it together. And he's going to tell you every other thing. But he won't be able to tell you that one thing that started in your house. Huh? My father had a cabinet. And I'm done. My father had a cabinet. And he said, stay out of my cabinet. If you don't obey your parents, there's a reason God says so. But I went in Daddy's cabinet and I found something. Huh? And over 40 years later, still dealing with what Daddy said not to do. Anybody got secret sin? Let's repent of it tonight. I want to give us a final promise. I thought we was gonna go that way too. Amen. The worship was enough. Worship was awesome. Amen. And the solution to this is worship. 
is staying in the presence of God. That's why he said, he that dwelleth in the secret place shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I got to get so lost in Jesus. Amen. That when the devil puts his car through the door to try to come behind me, his car don't work. <laughs> that he loses my scent. He can't find me anymore. But listen to what Job says, the 11th chapter. Job 11, 13 through 19. Keep playing, sir. But it says, If thou prepare thine heart and stretch out thine hands toward him, if iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away, and let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacles. For then thou shalt thou lift up thy face without spot. Thou shalt be steadfast and shalt not fear. Because thou shalt forget thy misery and remember it as waters that pass away. Because oh, And thine age shall be clearer than the noonday. Thou shalt shine forth. Thou shalt be as the morning. And thou shalt be secure. Can't nobody mess with you no more. Huh? Because there is hope. No more police at your door on Saturday night. Yea, thou shalt dig about thee, and thou shalt take thy rest in safety. Also thou shalt lie down, and none shall make thee afraid. Yea, many shall make suit unto thee. You've got to have praise. Praise him to the Lord. Whatever your secret sin is, God says, confess your faults one to another and grow up and learn how to handle some news when you get some news. Instead of jumping on the phone, pray for that brother. Pray for that sister. When you see that sister with a cigarette in her mouth, don't condemn her. Pray for that sister. When you see that brother staggering down the street and you know Sunday morning and he ought to be in church, pray for him. Because that's how we get the victory. And we drag it into a life. Come on, praise God. I know some people got to go to work in the morning. Amen. I know some people, this ain't next week. Next week we stay long as long. Amen. Tonight we can't. Amen. But I also just want to introduce Randy, who will be preaching tomorrow night. And he will come forth and just give us a quick word. So I'm going to wait for tomorrow. I'm going to wait for tomorrow. Amen. 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 But we want to give him a pass to Yeah. Okay.